for section views, camera views, and elevation views, I'm going to use this drawing. This drawing is just one that I did last year. It's not a project that you guys did. It's just one that I made for an example so I can show you how to do these different types of views. Uh, this is just a, a cabin that I drew. Uh, most of it makes good sense. I want to real quick draw your attention to how the closets are drawn here. This is really common in houses to see this, and I hope that yours are something similar to this, where we have a closet to this room here, a closet to that room here. And then oftentimes we have these little closets here for linens. That's a real common closet to have near bedrooms and bathrooms upstairs. Now, while that's not the requirements for this project, that will be requirements for future projects. I just wanted to show you an example of that while I had you here. Uh, section views are fairly simple. We have a section view that's already created here. Whenever we see this uh, circle and triangle connected, that's our section view, and that line should always stay in our floor plans. Some people want to erase that when they when they put their floor plans on a sheet, but by erasing that, you're really losing the reference point to where the section is taken. So just to refresh your memories, to do a section view, you click. This is the shortcut for it. Otherwise, you can go to View, Section, and you always want to start on the outside of your project, pull it all the way through, and click again. And then we got to make sure in this blue dashed line, it's a it's our depth of field. So if we want to only show this much, and we bring it there, it's going to cut off all of this, and it's going to look like white space behind it. So make sure that looks all the way through. And then down in our project browser, we now have section two that I can look at. And that again is I just cut my house right down the, the middle of it. That's what our section view looks like. Now camera view is a little bit different. Almost all these views have to start in our floor plan. Camera views are fun because they say I want to I'm just gonna get rid of this section view because we don't need it in the drawing right now. So now it just erased everything to do with that section view. It's as if it never existed. Uh, to do a camera view you come up here to view click on 3D view, and you can find camera. Now this walkthrough is also a really cool thing. We'll do that more in architecture too, but that is you set a trail and you walk through your house and then you save it and it's an animation that Autodesk or Revit creates for you so it feels like you're actually walking through your house. So that's a pretty fun thing to do and we'll explore a little bit more of that in architecture too. It's called architecture industrial design. If you're curious, you can still register for that class. So now that I have the camera thing activated, the camera view, I have to pick where I want to stand to take the picture. So let's say I want to know what this house looks like when I'm standing at the kitchen table and looking towards the fireplace. I have to click once to place the camera. That's where I'm standing to take the picture. And now I have to tell the camera which way to face when I take it. Uh, these blue lines are the depth of field. So if you stop the blue lines early, you're going to see white space after them. So always make that go all the way through uh, the walls and then click again, and it's automatically going to come up with your camera view. And sometimes you'll get this pretty narrow window of what things look like. You can grab these blue handles and make it bigger, but your picture will distort if you do too much of this. A better way to get a different depth of field is to come up here and say you're it change your eye elevation and your target elevation. So your eye elevation is where the camera was when it was taken. Your target elevation is the angle that the camera was taking. So if I want my seven feet, I'm not seven feet tall. Let's say I'm not even six feet, but we're going to say six feet. Um, we would change that to six feet. Now I have to do that before I take the camera, before I take the picture. So if I don't like this view, I can just erase it. Now that comes up as a 3D view. 3D view 10 is this. So if I don't like this one, I just have to delete it. And then I'll try to take another camera view using a different eye and target elevation. So where did we go here? Oh. For whatever reason, I need to click on camera first. <laughs> so now the camera view is up. I'm going to click take the picture and it's, it must make me change this here. So I'm going to say five feet. So in Revit, if you ever want to change something, you don't have to put the, the parentheses or the apostrophe in. It automatically recognizes feet first and inches second. So if I want to do five feet, 11 inches, I do five space 11 and automatically puts it in there. And my target elevation is going to be four feet. 
and I hit apply, and now we see a little different picture. I'm, I see a little bit more of the floor and the window. So that's a camera view, and I didn't take a camera view of the most interesting place in the in the room. Uh, if I wanted to get a little more interesting, there's a couple other these camera views that probably look a little nicer. So that's looking in the front door. That's looking at the front door. That's in the kitchen. So you can get the idea that these camera views are pretty fun views to use. Now to get a camera view on a sheet, it's the same thing that I've been doing. Uh, I, If you need to create a new sheet, you do that. If I do the 11 by 17, that comes up. I can bring my floor plans in there like I've always been doing. So dragging and dropping floor plans in. It's the exact same thing for camera views. I can bring that in. If I want to change how big this camera view is, I use the size crop function up here. So I click on that and we want to make sure that we always lock the proportions so that if I make the width 10 inches, the height is going to go with it and that changes. So it, the height will automatically change and that's a nice way to do it. You probably will never do a sheet that is just a 3D view like this. It'll probably be in conjunction with other sheets, uh, and that's okay. Uh, then that's to get the camera view. So we did the section view, camera view, and floor plan view again. We're just dragging and dropping. Remember, too, some people are struggling with this. If I try to bring my first floor plan onto a sheet, I can't have it on any other view. So if this floor plan is anywhere else on sheet A1, I have to erase it off of sheet A1 first. And if I want to change the size of it, I change the view scale to be a little smaller. So if I wanted to get all of my drawings on one sheet, I could do this. And then I can bring over my doo -doo 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 -doo, the section view I just took. Now remember, my section view is too big, so I can make it quite a bit smaller if I want to. Now I could fit that on there, and then if I wanted to even fit my elevation view, we could talk about elevation viewers real quick. Elevation view is the, what it looks like from the side, so if I want to take my elevation view and bring that in, I can do that. I just have to get my sheet back up that I just created. E5 unnamed, bring in my east elevation, drag, drop it in, and place it. And that is a little bit big, so we'd have to change a few things, including the scale on the elevation view to get it in there. But you can put multiple things on one sheet if you so desire.